Hello. I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to Prayer Works. My name is Patricia Thompson here at the Shield Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina, with Pastors Larry and Kathy Souls. And we are so excited to be here tonight because God is good. He's awesome. He's wonderful. He is off the chain. He is such a good, good, good God. And we just love him so very much. And I just thank you for joining us. If you have any prayer requests tonight, just email it to us at prayer.shield7 at gmail.com. Prayer.shield7 at gmail.com. And we will be delighted to join in with you tonight and to pray to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And just pray on your behalf and believe on your behalf that the same God, that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us so we can come before the Father tonight and we can make our requests known unto him. Isn't he good? Isn't he wonderful? I have a question for you tonight. Have you had a challenging week? Have you had a challenging month or a challenging year or just a challenging day? Our last few hours just been challenging for you. And sometimes when we challenge with different things and situations going on in our life, sometimes it, we just get so overwhelmed by that particular problem that we forget or we we just focus on the things that's just right around us and we can't begin to see sometimes or experience how good God is. But tonight, we want to use the word praise. And I want to see tonight, if you have a praise left inside of you, that may feel, you may feel like it's been watered down. You may feel like, the, you know, the rain came and just, just, you just, just destroyed all the fire that's in your praise. You may feel like tonight that you, have no, you don't have any energy to do it. It's like you just feel worn and your problems has, has outweighed your praise. So tonight, as we just read scriptures tonight on praise, as we just, uh, just do a few definitions on praise and the, what, what it means, I want you to tonight just begin to get a praise inside of you and begin to thank him for something that he's already done. And you can thank him for something that you pray for him to do, but begin to thank him for something that he's already done. Something that he, that you know, that you know, that you know, if God hadn't intervened in this particular situation, hey, it will not have happened. So as we think about the word praise tonight, the definition for praise means to commend, means to applaud, means to express appropriation or of allowed. It means to apply to a person or his act. Another definition means to extol in words or song means to magnify, to glorify on account of perfection or excellent works, to do honor to, to display the excellence of, applied especially to a divine being. Another definition for praise is to value, to appraise. It's commendation for worth, approval expressed, honor rendered because of excellence of worth, appropriation. Especially the joyful tribe tribute of gratitude and homage rendered to the divine being. Especially the joyful tribute of gratitude or homage rendered to the divine being. So when we think about the word praise tonight, we just want you just, just, just for the next few moments, just to get out of your box, just to... Get out of the situation you're in. You feel like you're in the dumps. Just, just come up a little bit and just, just listen to the inside of you. You know, as, and I remember as I was just meditating on this thing tonight, it, I just felt like he said, what about praise? What about praise? And I'm like, what about praise? And then as we begin to look at it and begin to see, you know, there's so many scriptures in the word, in the Bible about praise, about praising him, exalting him, magnifying him, lifting up his holy name. Telling him how good he is. Telling him how wonderful he is. Telling him how great he is. Telling that him that he's awesome. He's wonderful. He's mighty. He is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Telling him that he is just so worthy of all of our praise. You know, you look at Psalms 150 and Psalms 91. There's so many Psalms in the book, in the Bible, that just praise him. You know, and when you think about it, David didn't have all good times. All his situation didn't. Uh, just work out for the best for him at that particular time season. David had ups and he has downs. He lost things. 
You know, he, he didn't have everything where everything's just perfect in his life. And, but David, and then in the book of, in the Bible, we talked about David. David was a man of praise. Even in the, the book of Psalms talks about David. And then you think about David being king and how David was, had to go to war and how David had to fight and how David had to, had to deal with Saul and have that David had to go hide in the, in the cabin or out in the woods, wherever he was at. Things always wasn't that, that perfect for David. David had some ups and had some downs. And as David has ups and downs, just like we have in life, we have ups and we have downs. But it doesn't change who God is because God is still God. He's still wonderful. He's still great. He's just looking for a people that would say, oh, Lord, I praise you tonight. He's looking for a people that say, I'll lift you up tonight. He's looking for a people that say, I will praise your holy name tonight. He's looking for a people that say, Lord, no matter what I'm going through right now, I still say that you are a good God. And this, my situation, does not change who you are because you are good. And when we think about that tonight, and we just meditate on these scriptures tonight, I just pray tonight that you, these scriptures, just, these scriptures begin to just marinate inside of your spirit. Marinate inside of your, your, your soul, inside of your being tonight. And that it just December and just begin to marinate. Just like when you're cooking something, you begin to season it and you put different different uh, flavors in it and different seasoning in it and you let it marinate. I pray tonight that these scriptures begin to marinate in your spirit and you begin to feel it tonight and you begin to experience God tonight in a way that you've never known before because God is a good God. He's a wonderful God. He's great. He's awesome. And there is none like him. So when we applaud him tonight, when we uh, express his goodness tonight, when we extol him in the words in his song tonight, when we magnify him tonight, when we glorify him tonight, we are glorifying a divine being. We're not just glorifying anybody. We are glorifying a divine being, a divine being, a person that created us, a person that knew us even before we was conceived in our mother's womb. Uh, uh, we, we're creating, we're applauding a divine being that knew that we would be here tonight. Or wherever you may be tonight, whenever you listen to this, we are applauding a divine being. And that divine being is, is awesome. He is off the chain. He's just wonderful. He's great. He is just, just marvelous. There is no one like him. And when we think about that tonight, begin to praise him because he is good. And whatever you're going through tonight, begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Begin to tell him how good he is. Begin to tell him how wonderful he is. Whether you have pain in your body, whether you need a bill to be paid, whether you need this or whether you need that, doesn't change who he is. And you may say, well, you keep saying that because I really believe that because he is good. He is good. Psalms 145 says, I will exalt you, my God, my King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Now, you think about David, you think, oh, why would he write something like this? Why would he write this? You know, I believe that just one God encounter, just one experience, just one way that David seen that God delivered him and God blessed him. And I believe that, you know, in my, my mind, I, I would think that David learned to not to forget what God had already done. <coughs> he learned to be in remembrance of what God had done for him. He learned that years before he became king, years before he wrote these, these Psalms in the Bible, and, you know, he began to learn that God is good. Even when he was the shepherd boy, he began, he knew God. He understood God. And even though he was out in the wilderness or out in the field with the sheep, and he began to see God move in his life by him protecting the sheep, he began to know that there is a divine being. His brothers didn't know that. His father may have not known it in the way that David did. But the thing about David is that he had this personal relationship with God. And if we have a personal, personal relationship with him, and we begin to see that he is the divine being, he is the divine being. We don't have to look for another. We don't have to go 
to another town or another city to find this particular being. This being was one, someone that we can ask to come in our heart any day at any time of night. And we, this being is even if he's already inside of you, you ask him to come in your heart. G, his name is Jesus. And when you begin to ask him and call on his name, no matter what you're going through tonight, he is a divine being. And I know I keep saying that, but I, I just keep stressing that because he's not like the bank. He's not like a lawyer. He's not like an a attorney when you have to go to war, you need something. Or like your mom and dad or your parents. You know, it, the, the, our loved ones can help us with different situations. And God can use them to help with different situations. But our loved one's not divine. Our loved one can't touch our bodies and, and command something to leave in Jesus' name. We can do that, but it's because of the power that we have in Jesus, but the power that we have with that divine being. So see, we can speak healing to you tonight, and we command that spirit of infirmity to go tonight. Why? Because of that divine being. And his name is God. His name is Jesus. David knew of him. That's why I believe that David says, I will exalt you, God my king. Even though he knew that Saul was a king, at some point in his life, when Saul was king, but yet he determined his life and determined himself that God is the God over Saul <coughs> and that God is his king, that God would meet his every need, that God would do everything in his power to help him, to protect him, to deliver him, to take care of him. And that's what God has said about you tonight, that he will take care of you. And that's why David said, I can exalt him. I can exalt him even when the enemy is running after me trying to kill me. I can exalt him because, you see, I remember. I remember what he did when I was just a shepherd boy. I remember when the lion came before me, when the lion tried to take the sheep. I can remember when the bear came, and I used my bare hands. You know, you think about a bear with a young man, maybe 16 or 17 years old. And he wasn't really heavy set. He wasn't really tall. He wasn't really built. Now, how in the world can a young man take a bear and just kill him? Or take a lion and kill him? You know, let's think. It's no way except for the divine being that was there protecting him. So as we look at praise tonight, I want you to declare in your life, look, I'm going to praise him no matter what. I'm going to magnify him no matter what. I'm going to talk to him no matter what. I'm going to exalt him no matter what. I'm going to glorify his name no matter what. I'm going to give him honor no matter what. I'm going to display the excellence of his goodness no matter what. Why? Because God is good. Another one says, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. No one can fathom. No one. No one can 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 even really understand or explain his goodness. No one can take his praise and, and, and just say, well, you know, this is God. And because and the thing about it is that when he do one thing for you or did something for you yesterday and do something again, then he's doing something tomorrow. He's doing something again the same day. And it's like no one can fathom that. It's like your mind can't even comprehend it. But you just know that you know that you know that it's him that did it. And because he's good. So I pray tonight that you get a revelation of the word praise. My prayer for you tonight that you get a revelation of that one word praise. You get a revelation of that. Because as we get a revelation of that, there will be nothing to hinder or stop or delay us in any way possible. And when I say delay, I'm saying when we ask in prayer and we expect for it to happen tomorrow, it doesn't happen. Because I believe that when we pray, we ask God for something. And if it's for us, I believe it's for us. But I, sometimes we, we, we may be delayed, not because he delaying it from us on purpose, because we're not ready for it. We're not, we're not it's like giving a, a six-year-old child a car to drive give them the keys and say you go drive the car you know the car may be theirs and you may save it till they get old enough but right now they can't be responsible for it because they're not responsible they're just a six-year-old 
So I believe sometimes in life when we pray, we can get so distressed and oppressed because things are not happening. But God is saying tonight, look, I can give it to you right now, but I've given it to you right now. It would destroy you. It would destroy you. So delay sometimes is not a bad thing. It's like God is waiting for us to grow up that we can walk into this. There are certain anointings that we ask for God for. There are certain things that we ask God to do in our lives. There are certain things that, that we so long desire. And what God is saying tonight, look, I just want you to praise me until you see it done. I just want you to talk to me. I want you to go to bed with my, with, with my name on your mind. I want you to wake up in the middle of the night with my name on your mind. I want you to get up in the morning and you say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Or you say, good morning, Jesus. This is another day and we're going to do this day together. Praise is, is so awesome. Praise is so awesome. And I pray that as I'm talking tonight, that within you, that within that that and within your belly, that that uh, spirit of praise begin to well up inside of you. Begin to well up inside of you. Begin to well up inside of you. That you find yourself saying, thank you, Jesus. I thank you for this. I thank you for that. I thank you for my loved one. I thank you for my health, my strength. I thank you. I have joy. I have peace. Thank you for, for everything. You Just name something. Just say, Lord, I thank you for it. Why? Because he's worthy of praise. He is a divine being that created the heavens and the earth. And you know, in six days, in six days, he created the heaven and the earth. Six days. I mean, the, the, just, cre just spoke it with his mouth. It's not like he took his hand and, and began to build something like what we build. We would take nails and we would take the lumber and we would take glue, whatever it is, to, to build something. When you look at these buildings that, that's 10 feet or 10 stories or 15 stories high, and you see men that just build and build and build it, God didn't do that. He did it with his mouth. He did it with a thought. And he created. It was there. He made it which just with a thought. So he's a divine being. So I want to keep saying that because I, I believe someone needs to hear that tonight. You need to understand that your situation is not as bad as you think it is. That whatever you're going through, that it's not too hard for God. You need to understand that whatever you're experiencing right now, it's not too hard for God to set you free. It's not. Well, you need to understand that he loves you. That Jesus died for you. And whatever you're going through tonight, that he took it on the cross for you. You have to realize tonight that if he, even if it's a body part that you need tonight, you have to realize that he knew that you'd be going through this, so he already made a plan that, that, that as you get another body part. You know, you know, it's like so many times we, we, with our little minds, we try to bring God into our box, and that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. It makes you feel bad. It makes me feel bad. It makes me feel like, you know, nothing is happening. Because I can't fit him in my box. My box is too small for him. He is a divine being. And as a divine being, we have to learn to say that great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. You know, when you look at the, through the Bible, and you remember story after story after story. Each chapter tells about what God did. Each chapter tells about what God did in that particular season and that in their particular life. And they begin to tell the mighty acts that God did. And as you begin to think about the mighty acts, what mighty acts has he done for you? Think about it. What has he done for you? You may say, well, my thing was so little, it's not a mighty act, but it was something that you couldn't do. It was something that you could not do. So it's a mighty act. What mighty act that he has done for you. That you can begin to say, Lord, I want to thank you. I want to praise you. Because when we think about prayer works tonight, prayer works is prayer. It's not without praise. We can pray and we can fast and we can believe. But we have to put praise in there. Because we be, as we pray, then we begin to praise him for what we know that we ask of him to do. And it's according to his will, so he would do it. So what we do, we praise him for it. We exalt him. We lift his name up. We applaud him. And we tell him how good he is. And we tell others of what God did for us. 
They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. Are you meditating on his wonderful works? Are you telling him what he did for you? How much you appreciate it? You know, it's so easy to forget what he's done when you go through something that's that going through something new. When you went through something yesterday and you saw what he did, you're like, oh, God, I thank you, I praise you. But another situation comes up, it's so easy to forget what he's done. But, hey, we serve a divine being. He is a divine being. So that means that he wants us to remember. Go back and remember what he's done. Because as you go back and remember, it helps us to realize something. It helps us to realize that the same God, the same God that did this in the past, it'd be the same God that do this now. That's why it's so easy to forget what he's done. That's why it's so easy for the enemy to want us to forget. Because it's like God has never done anything for us in our life. Our whole life, he has never done nothing. But we know that's not true. Because everybody, when you think about it, you see something that God did for you. And you begin to thank him. You begin to praise him. And you begin to tell him uh, to meditate on those wonderful works. Just take a second and just meditate on what he's done for you. Meditate on how good he's been to you. Meditate how wonderful he's been to you. What did he do? Did he heal you? Did he open your blinded eyes? Did he save you? Did he deliver you from something? Did he take you out of bondage? Did he do something for your children? Did he protect your children in a way that, that you know that you couldn't have done, that it had to be God? Did he make a way for you to prosper? Did he make a way for you to, to pay a particular bill? What has he done? Think of something of the wonderful works that he's done. And as you begin to think of that, then I just begin to thank God for you. That God would just give you a spirit of revelation when it comes to praise. That you begin to understand praise in a way you never have before. That even sometimes, you know, when you get so happy, you get so excited about something that somebody has done for you. you we can get so excited. You know, we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I just want you to remember what that person, see that person face and see how God used that person and begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I want to meditate on your wonderful works. And I thank you for what you've done. Prayer works is all about prayer. And prayer does work. But prayer also works with praise. Because when you praise him, you begin to see not that he's only good, not that, that he's only wonderful, but you begin to see him as your good father. You begin to see him just as who he is. Not because of what he's done for you, but because of who he is. Another thing says, to tell, they tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will, pro I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Then the Lord is good to all. So as we close for the next, these next few moments before we close, I just want to encourage you to praise him. And Lord, I just speak to everyone that's listening tonight. And I just pray that a praise, just, just a little small flame, begin to rise up inside of you. And as you begin to open your mouth, don't say it quietly, but you begin to open your mouth. You say, well, you know, I'm, I may be too weak. I can't so say it with my mouth. Just mutter it. Just mutter with your mouth and just begin to say it with your mouth. And you begin to see yourself get stronger and stronger and stronger. So I pray tonight that the eyes of our understanding is in light, that we know the hope of our calling, that we understand, God, that you are good and that you are wonderful and that your mercy endures forever. And that you are a great God. And Lord, we thank you tonight that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Lord God, that we know that it's our responsibility to praise you. That it's our responsibility to show you how grateful we are for who you are and what you've done in our life. Lord, we thank you tonight that from this day forth, we will exalt you. Not, not, not uh, based on my circumstances, but based upon who you are. We thank you tonight, Lord God, that you are our God and our King. And we will praise you. And we will exalt your name forever and ever and ever.
So I pray tonight, Lord God, that you would give every last one of us a revelation of to praise you every day. Bring back to our remembrance, Holy Spirit, when we forget, go throughout the day without saying thank you. We go up the, throughout the day without saying, Lord, I thank you, I praise you, I honor you, I exalt you. Let us, oh Father, be mindful of the moments that throughout the day, whether it's a minute, whether it's two minutes, that we can just, just be like Daniel when he made a decision that three times a day he would go and he would pray to his father. Let us, oh God, be reminded, Holy Spirit, that we too can be reminded to praise you throughout the day. That we can understand that you are great, you're awesome, you're wonderful, you, you're such a great God, and you deserve our praise. So we thank you tonight, Father God, that says, just as they are praising you right now, that, Father, that praise is lifting them up for the situation that they're in. Thank you, Father God, that tonight while they're praising you right now, that they are being lifted up from the pain that they're experiencing, that they're being lifted up out of the sorrow and the hurt that they've been experiencing. Father, I thank you tonight that praise is lifting them up, that they're being lifted up because of the praise, Lord. And we thank you, Father God. Thank you that they bring back to our remembrance of how to praise you. Teach us how to praise you. Teach us how, what to say to you. So many times we don't know what to say. But Lord, we thank you that even if we just said hallelujah, hallelujah, and we just said hallelujah, or you just said thank you, Jesus, then you begin to see yourself begin to rise up for where you at. God is in the rising up business. He's not into just pushing you down. That's not him. He's into pushing you up. He wants you to come up with him. So praise him tonight. For the Lord is good. The Lord is trustworthy in all his promises and faithful in all he does. He really is. And the Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. So if you're bowed down tonight, he's here to lift you up. If you are falling, he's, he's here to lift you up. If your eyes are bowed down or looking down, he's here to lift you up. He's, he's a great God. He's here to protect you, to deliver you, to help you. Let praise be a part of your life tonight. Let praise be a part of your everyday life. That even in the midst of whatever you're going through, and whatever you may be experiencing, <laughs> whatever you may be experiencing, let praise be a part of your life. Because praise make it a little easier. Praise make things just a little easier for you. Make it easier for you. Because you begin to realize and take your problems, your, your mind off what you're going through. Begin to put uh, your mind on the God who can solve your problems. The God who have all the answers. Have all the answers. Have all the answers. So I pray tonight that whatever you need from God tonight, if it's a healing, I believe tonight in Jesus' name that the spirit of infirmity must leave your body now in Jesus' name. If it's finances or, or if it's joy and peace or if it's a mental thing, emotional things, whatever it is you're going through tonight, I pray that there's an anointing tonight that break yokes in your life, that you just receive it tonight because God is good. He's awesome. He's worthy to be praised and worship endured. I just pray that his protection be over you. I thank you that you experience his love like you never had before. I thank you that you would just feel his arm just, just encamp right around you and just hold you and like he's protecting you, like he's, he's loving on you tonight. That you feel his love, that you would know that he's never left you. He will never leave you because in his word he say he will not. So let's rise up with him tonight with the praise. Let's say hallelujah. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Let's say, Lord, we exalt you. Let's say, Lord, we extol you. Let's just, just, and the more you do it, the more you feel like doing it. Because praising is not by the way you feel. Praise is by the act of faith. And knowing that just because I don't feel like it doesn't mean anything. Because I ain't going to praise him when I don't feel like it. And then you, as you praise him, then eventually you begin to feel like it. Because you begin to change you, begin to feel better. So accept what God has for you tonight. He is awesome. He loves you so very much. He loves you so very much. And whatever praise that you have inside of you, flame it. Put some water on that flame. Or not water, water drown it out. But put some fire on that flame tonight. Be a flame of fire for God. 
with your praise. And as you go to sleep tonight, praise him. As you go to wake up in the morning, praise him. Throughout your day, all day, off and on, just praise him. Praise him. Praise him. And see what he will do. He will come through for you. Why? Because I believe tonight that prayer works. And prayer is working for you. Prayer is working for you. So you just be exi excited tonight. You just be, be adored tonight. And you just, as you just feel his presence coming through the camera wherever you at tonight. We speaking to you tonight. Prayer works. Praise works. And as you continue to praise him, even with Psalms 145, just take those, take that particular psalm and just read it and just meditate on it. Just take verse by verse and just meditate it. Uh, and don't try to read it so fast. Just, just take one verse and just meditate on it for the 15 minutes. I will exalt you, my God, my King. And just let that soak into your spirit and let that begin to saturate you and as you begin to see yourself begin to rise up out of the situation that you're in and you begin to get so mighty that you'll be like David come with the bear that's in front of you with the lion that's in front of you because the lion the bear of sickness and disease that's in front of you hey not too big for God because God used David to destroy them both if God can do it for David whatever bears in your life whatever lion is confronting you tonight God it would do, help it do it for you. Why? Because he loved you. I thank you so very much for joining us tonight with Prayer Works. Here with Patricia Thompson here at Shield of Faith Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you to know that Pastor Larry and Pastor Kathy loves you. And we want to invite you to come be with us on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock and 1015. And know, hey, that God is good. He's awesome. He's wonderful. Keep your praise burning. Keep that flame burning. Keep it burning. And know that every day, every day, every day you get better and better and better. Your problems may be still there, but hey, praise will help bring you out. We thank you for joining us, joining us and know that God loves you, but keep praising. Keep praising because prayer really, really, really works.